playoff day today. Two tough games coming up against Greenock Morton from the Championship. Let's go and see how we hold up against them. Hi there folks, I'm Nick from Sonic FM and welcome back to episode 5 of Sons of the Rock. As I said in the intro, and as you'll have seen from yesterday, we have the playoff semi-final first and second legs today against Greenock Morton. Only been a couple of game days in-game, uh, basically just hit continue a couple of times until we got to the game. So nothing really to report any different from yesterday. Uh, the only thing really is that a couple of the players that I'd offered new contracts to from the team turned them down. So... That's pretty much it. We'll deal with that after we get the playoffs out of the way. And we get straight into the game. And this is the team for the first leg. We have Zabra in goals. Kitongo, McGeever, Devine and Wardrop at the back. Alito coming back from an injury. Uh, and Carswell and Frizzell are the midfield with Richie Hosler just ahead of them. Behind Crossan and Hanrati. Uh, now you probably see there that Devine is recommended to only 45 minutes. Uh, Richie Hosler, a fitness test not required, but he should be monitored as well. So we need to keep an eye on both of them throughout the game. We've got Ross Forbes, who we could put on the bench. He's recommended for 30 minutes of action. I think that we've got enough uh, in midfield that we can afford to keep him, keep him out of the gate of the team for the game just now. Uh, and let him get back to full fitness and kick off time for the first leg. We're at home for the first leg, so a clean sheet uh, would be an ideal result. Maybe if we could, you know, nick a 1-0 a win or something. I'll be really happy with that getting into the second leg. And 20 minutes into the game, we have been the better team. Uh, we've limited Greenock to no shots so far, although the first highlight coming in is a shot for them. First highlight of the game, and it's a header just over the bar. I should maybe have kept my mouth shut. Uh, as we have a throw in now on the right hand side, it's Wardrop to take it. Gets it turn right, he nods it back to Frizzell. Frizzell squares it across to Katongo, and Katongo with an absolute bullet from outside the box. He grabs his second goal of the season. He's one of the ones that just turned down a new contract. So I'm going to be looking to tie him down, even if he's not going to be our starting left back. Um, it would be good to have him there. His backup cover for both left back and the left midfield. Especially when he can do things like that. It would have been nice if he was doing things like that earlier in the season. Uh, Carswell's picked up a bit of a knock. But he seems to be able to be... Oh, I'll start again. He seems to be okay to play through it. At half time then. Played well. There is still some room for improvement. Just but keep it going. I'm really happy with how things are going at the moment. Throw in from Katongo to Frizzell. Carswell's got it now on the left. He plays a ball in and Hanrati gets up there. But it goes all the way through to Kane Ritchie Hosler. And he grabs his 10th goal of the season to make it 2-0. Where has this form come from? I am not complaining in the slightest. But where has this form been all season? Hanrati going up there for it but just over his head. And Ritchie Hosler comes in at the back post. To, not, to knock it home. 2 0 now. And we have been dominant in this game. Absolutely dominant, and I am loving every second of it. Right, 65 minutes in. Let's get some fresh legs on. Carswell, he has got that injury, so we'll take him off. We'll bring Gallagher on for him. Uh, Crossing's not playing particularly well, so we will get Denny Johnson on for him. And Devine is. Not playing well and he's been booked. I think we're going to leave things as they are for now. I don't want to make too many changes. Richie Hosler is now tired. So I think we'll get him off. And we'll bring McCluskey on for him. And I'm not sure if I can make more substitutions. If we can, I think we will get Weatherburn on for the event. No, we cannot. So in the playoffs, it is three substitutions only. That's fine. We've made our three substitutions. Nothing else we can do now. Just need to see out the rest of the game. And if we can see it out with a 2-0 victory, that would be fantastic. I know I've said I don't think that promotion would be ideal for us. I'm not going to turn it down if it happens. I'm not going to turn around to the league and say, no thanks. Don't want promoted this season, thank you. 
because ultimately we got up to the next level again it means more money the reputation increase we could potentially uh, attract better players uh, players like Hanrati might be able to come back to us so good win for us there Carswell is injured he's only going to be out for two or three days so he might be back in time for the next game but we'll see when we come back well, just before we come back for the Greenock Morton uh, second leg just wanted to show you that Aberdeen our affiliate club our senior affiliate club have won the Scottish Cup a beat Rangers in penalties in the final so hopefully some of the players that are going to benefit from that can come to us on loan. The team then for the second leg of the playoff semi-final is Zabra in goals, Katongo, Weatherburn, Devine and Wardrop at the back, Weatherburn coming in for McGeever, uh, Alito, Frizzell and Gallagher in the midfield, Gallagher replacing uh, Carswell who picked up that knock, and uh, Richie Hosler just ahead of them behind Crossan and Hanrati as the strikers. Game underway then. And if we can grab an early goal in this game, I definitely think that would be enough to see us over the line and into the playoff final. Um, that would give us an away goal. So it would then mean that Greenock would need to score four to go through. As Hanrati's got the ball, he gets it into the box and a scramble about in the box there before the ball's eventually cleared. In the other game, Falkirk have a 3-0 uh, aggregate lead over Montrose. Although Montrose have just scored to pull one back. Crossing has a shot from outside the box. He's only scored once for his this season. But Falkirk have levelled in that tie. So I think it's going to be Falkirk that the winner of this game, or the winner of this tie, plays in the final. Which is not good news for us if we get through because we've been horrendous against Falkirk all season. But we need to get through this tie first. And as we approach the final 10 minutes of the half, a throw in for Wardrop. Plays it into the box, but it's headed clear by the Morton defence. And they can break forward now. Ball's dropped all the way back to the defence and then played forward. Wardrop does well to cut out the ball. Richie Hosler has it now. He's coming forward and he gets into the box. He's shot. It's saved by the goalkeeper. I thought that was just going to sneak in at the far post. We come into half time. I'm really pleased with how the team are playing. Uh, same, more of the same in the second half. Will be perfectly fine with me. Although because of the amount of games that we've played in such a short space of time... Players are starting to tire, although looking at the Morton team, they're worse off than we are. That's Katongo with the throw-in. He's got it back now, gives it to Frizzell. Frizzell finds Alito on the left, he's cut inside now. Gives it to Gallagher with the ball of the top for Hanrati, I think, yeah, it's offside. Just before I jump out my seat and cheer, we'll see it again. Gallagher plays the ball of the top, Hanrati just too slow to get back. Clearly offside. No arguments there. But it's Greenock now with the throw in Katongo. This time heads the ball clear. But it's with Morton in midfield. It's still with Morton. If someone in yellow and black could get a foot in and take the ball, please. Anybody at all. Nope, nobody wanted to do it. So you're just going to allow Morton to keep passing the ball about there. Which, to be fair, they're not doing anything with it. As the ball over the top is played to Wallace, but Zabrick gets down and makes an excellent save. And Wardrop is able to pick up the ball in the end and clear it. Right, coming into 70 minutes, I think we'll make some changes. Pressing things up a bit, as we see Richie Hossler's tired, McCluskey can come on for him. Uh, Katongo's tired, Church can come on for him. And Gallagher's not playing well, so Forbes can come on for him. 15 minutes left to play. I am very happy with how things are going. Falkirk are absolutely destroying Montrose 5 1. That's 8 1 on aggregate. Rossen has the ball now. He gives it out wide to Wardrop, inside to Forbes, but Forbes' pass is loose. And McGuffey has picked up and is breaking forward now for Morton. And he gets a shot off and tucks it into the far corner. I don't know what the goalkeeper was doing there. 
or the defence for that matter. Poor pass from Forbes and McGuffey completely unchallenged. Devine just too slow to get back to him and the goalkeeper doesn't move with the shot. That is not ideal. It's 2-1 on aggregate now as we get into the final five minutes of the game. It's a free kick for Morton. Free kick comes in, Weather burns there to head clear though and Crossing's picked up. He's got time, a chance to break away now. He's got ahead of his man, he's got Hanratty with him. And he finds Hanratty in the box, but he's offside. Oh! He is just offside. He just needed to hold his run for a second more and he would have been clean in to score that. Chops with the ball now, plays it inside to Forbes. Forbes trying to find Hanratty ahead of him and this time Kevin Hanratty, no doubt, 29th goal of the season, gives us that crucial away goal and makes it 3-1 on aggregate. I think I can confidently say now that we are going to the playoff final. I said in yesterday's video that I wasn't expecting anything from this game because Morton are the championship team. It looks like Henry may have just been offside there. I'm not going to query it though. If it's given, it's given. I will take it. He's already had two goals ruled out for offside. I'm not going to complain about that one. As Morton score... And their goal is ruled out for offside itself. <laughs> the final few seconds of the game now, just letting the clock tick down. Free kick. Vine plays out wide to Wardrobe. But Morton managed to pick up a loose pass. Doesn't come to anything though. We don't really need to see the highlight for that offside. Full time whistle goes, one each. Away from home against Greenock. Makes a 3-1 win on aggregate. Absolutely fantastic. They've not taken the lines off the pitch yet. And look at that. 8-1. That is ridiculous. Controls the team that finished third in the league. They're a bit behind Falkirk, but still they were third in the league. And Falkirk have just absolutely done them 8-1 on aggregate. That is concerning. Now, the final is a two-legged affair as well. I was going to say, if the final is only one leg, we'll just go and do that now. But it's two legs, so we'll come back tomorrow's episode for that. Uh, so that'll be tomorrow's episode then. We'll come back for the playoff final, and we'll do a season review after that as well. That's the end of episode five, uh, the playoff semi-final. Good results for us today. And if you enjoyed watching us, Beat Greenock Morton to get to the playoff final, then make sure you leave a like down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any videos going forward. And as always, thank you very much for watching.